Let's talk about the let's talk about the Colts real quick though. Uh, Jonathan Taylor is out, and you talked about this. You alluded to it just a second ago. Jonathan Taylor is going to be out with an ankle injury. There was hopes that he could give it a go this week with a mild high ankle. The thing is, I don't know about this mild high ankle thing they keep talking about because this seems like if it's high ankle, it's a problem. I don't know about this yeah. mild thing anymore. But it was a mild high ankle. There was a chance to give it a go. Obviously not. Zach Moss slated to give. Uh, excuse me, uh, Trey Sermon expected to start in his absence. We see we saw Trey Sermon limited action last year as a starter. He had like 17 carries. It was a week where he had a volume day, 17 carries, 88 yards. So we know he can handle the workload. Haven't really seen him be good in an extended period of time. If this is a multi-week absence, how do you view Trey Sermon as a RB2, RB3, a flex? And do you think there's anybody else in this backfield that you'd want to see get a bigger workload? Um, nobody else really in this backfield. It's just, and the thing with Trey Sermon is with bye weeks, like I would say he's more of like a back in RB2 during the bye weeks, um, and with injuries, just because the volume, like he's probably going to see a ton of volume. Um, yeah. he's going to be the preferred back. He's going to play the pass down. So with the team's goal line back. So he's going to see the volume and volume typically is king in fantasy football. Like obviously we got like Najee Harris who doesn't put up good fantasy points, but sees a lot of volume and he could be like that. But like, once again, that's, it's decent during bye weeks Like, and, and if you have injuries, so he's a guy that I would definitely stash. Um, if he's still available, he shouldn't be available in 12 team leagues. Like he should definitely be picked up. I, I think, um, but if he's available, definitely pick him up. And if you need running back help, need like a, a, I don't even want to say desperation because I think he's a decent flex uh, if Jonathan Taylor's out. So he's somebody that I don't want to say I feel good about in my starting. I do feel good about. I feel good about the volume. If it, if he doesn't lead the fantasy points, it's like 40, 40 total yards. Like it is what it is. But Who else I, I is there? Who yeah, else like, is that running back right yeah. now? Like there's not a lot of great options. And when you can get a guy that's starting, probably going to see somewhere between 15, 20 touches. Why not start him? Yeah, like, and yeah, yes, not every, yeah, everybody can't be a hit. Like everybody, you can't have a lineup full of like 20-point guys. Sometimes you have to have players who are a little bit more risky. And I think Trey Sermon I wouldn't even say he's up. risky. It's, it's just good. he just comes down to like doesn't score a touchdown and he has like 40 yards. But that's a, and there's a lot of those options when you talk about guys like you know Zach Moss is probably in that mm -hmm. tier. You're probably debating starting Cam Akers. Cam Akers is in that tier. Uh, there's Najee a bunch Harris. of running backs. He's in there too. Najee, like there's there's a lot of players who are in that. If they don't score a touchdown, they're kind of asked here. And I think Trey Sermon fits in that. And just on pure volume for the next couple of weeks, I think he's startable, especially with buys here too. Yeah. So I don't mind Trey Sermon as like a RB two, RB three play. Yeah. Moving forward. For sure. What about quarterback here? What about quarterback here, Tyler? Because uh, Anthony Richardson, man, got hurt last week. Hit there was he looked like he was on track to play this week, and then all of a sudden, we got reports that Joe Flacco was taking over QB one snaps this week. So uh, at least today in practice, so feels like this thing's trending towards Joe Flacco being the leader for this offense over the weekend against Jacksonville, which I think is fine for the people who have uh, you know the, the the passing game options for the Colts. I think he'll be able to move the football downfield. But for those who have Anthony Richardson. Now, we saw him look good. We saw him play well, and then he got hurt. This was one of the concerns that a lot of people had this offseason. Yeah. I, I mean, if if Joe Flacco ends up being the starting quarterback, I, I like these passing options a lot, honestly. I, like, I even like Josh Downs. Like, Josh Downs had a good week last week, and I think Josh Downs is a good real-life wide receiver and could potentially be a pretty solid fantasy wide receiver if he has a quarterback that's going to throw the football. And I think Joe Flacco, like we saw last week, he's going to be able to throw the football. He's going to be able to move the offense. Um, So if Joe Flacco does end up starting this week, <laughs> Michael Pittman was somebody I did not like at all this season, but I think Michael Pittman becomes honestly a very good wide receiver, like a, a very rock solid wide receiver too. You could even argue like a high end. Who do they play? Jacksonville, right? Play Jacksonville, yeah, and Jacksonville yeah. has been getting eaten up by wide receivers so far this season, I want to say. So it's a good matchup. Uh, we know that Michael Pittman's really good. It's just a matter of him actually being able to have – yeah, Jacksonville's going up the fifth most points wide receivers so far this season. So really good matchup. Um, with Anthony Richardson, I do think it's interesting because he was – like you said, he was practicing all week. He was practicing yeah. all week. So I don't know if they're like, well, let's not even try to throw him out there. Let's get him completely healthy because he's hopefully our future. But also like – he looked terrible for those first three weeks. I don't think that this team would be giving up on him. Um, it's just something that's, I don't know, it's a little odd. 
There's but we'll no chance they're giving up on him. I don't. I don't think. At least I don't think. No, but I, I. I think that there comes a point where if he continues to play bad and Joe Flacco is able to move the offense, like if you're gonna go with the guy who's able to move the offense, I don't think it's happened yet. But it is like slightly concerning, in my opinion, that he's practicing all week and then all of a sudden Joe Flacco is taking first team reps. Like, well, we saw a change against weird. the Steelers. Like, we saw a change against the Steelers, and I think what we saw was that we saw a different version of Anthony Richardson. One player I don't think I gave enough credence to, and it kind of reminds me of like the Chiefs situation right now. I didn't give enough credence to the fact that Josh Downs was out. He was a valuable piece for this offense over the intermediate part of the field, and now when you talk about those levels of being able to move the football. You were without an intermediate option in the passing game for the first three games of the year. Anthony Richardson either had to throw it deep or use his legs. That was literally it because teams had coverage on Michael Pittman. And I think it's like it's easy to think about things in fantasy football and be like, this guy sucks or he's not good or maybe it's not the role. But I schematically, I did not think about the impact that Josh Downs had on this offense. And it's it was clear as day to me against Pittsburgh. Like, oh, shit, he opens things up for everybody. And yeah. sometimes that's why you have players. That's why the Hollywood Brown missing, I think it affected this Chiefs offense. So that's why, you know, when you talk about adding a guy like Stephon Diggs, it, it opens up things for a Nico Collins in this Texans offense. Like there's just certain players that are able to open up offenses. And I didn't, I, I hate to say it, it's like, I just think that Josh Downs is probably more valuable in real life than I even realized. So mm-hmm. going to this offense, I still think we need to see more from Anthony Richardson. Now that he has a fully healthy team, Jonathan Taylor needs to be back. He needs to be healthy himself, but, it is weird to see this team exercise ultimate caution with him heading into this weekend after just not doing that in the game. When he got yeah. the hip injury, you put him in on a QB but, but, run, yeah. a design QB run the next play, and he gets hurt. Now you want to exercise extreme caution. It don't make fucking sense to me. Yeah. So we'll see. I, like, I, I want to say, though, I don't think this team is giving up on him. It's just strange. We'll, we'll see. He might even play. Who knows? Or he yeah. might be the starting quarterback. Like, who knows? There is a, there is a chance to. Maybe they're holding him out today. Who knows? But uh, something to note there. 